This LOS is explained put call parity for European options. Now we're moving on to put call parity and European put and call prices are related through put call parity which specifies that the put price plus the price of the underlying, so there's the put price plus the price of the underlying equals the call price plus the present value of the exercise price, okay? And so we can restate that, that uh, we can see S naught is long the asset plus P naught, which is long the put, equals long the call plus we change it to say long on a bond, okay? So therefore, you absolutely have to memorize that equation. S naught plus P naught equals C naught plus X over 1 plus R to the power of T, okay? Now, just using simple algebra, we can rearrange that formula, and we can see here that we can have a synthetic put. We can create a synthetic put by being long the call, short the asset, and long the bond, okay? So if it's a positive sign, it's long. If it's a negative sign, it's short, okay? Uh, again, you can create a synthetic call by being long the put, uh, long the asset, and short the bond. We're just, we're, we're just rearranging the algebra, see, if I'm starting, if I want C naught to be positive, I'm just going to move uh, the bond from being long to the short side. So you can see I'm going to be long the put, long the asset, and short the bond. So all the practice questions become a word game. They give you, you know, what is the most likely, least likely way to create a, a synthetic put or a synthetic call. And then you have to go through and match it up. So I always say write out the formula once. Then when they give you the, the uh, you know, the solutions, rewrite it, rewrite it out, uh, you know, make the adjustments to the formula in this manner, then match it up. And these questions are all, you know, really not all that difficult because you're memorizing one formula and then you're just rearranging it. it, it again, it becomes a bit of a word game and you're going to see that in the practice questions coming up, okay? So again, we can be long the asset is equivalent to being long the call short the put and long the bond. So along the asset, I'm just going to move the uh, P naught over to this side so you can see I'm long the call, I'm long the bond, but I'm going to be short the put. I'm going to make it a negative. Okay, then finally, long on the bond, what would I do? I'd have to move the call over to, uh, to the left-hand side. Therefore, obviously, I'd be long on the asset, I'd be long on the put, and I'd be short on the call. Okay, so it all comes down to memorizing this very important formula for European put and call, uh, put call parity, which uh, specifies that the put price plus the price of the underlying equals the call price plus the present value of the exercise price. And really, this is the only slide for this LOS, uh, and then we'll get into a series of practice questions, which is the word games based on these, uh, on these formulas, okay? So we're just going to move on now to a couple of practice questions. The first one, based on put-call parity, a trader who combines a long asset, a long put, and a short call will create a synthetic A, long bond, B, fiduciary call, or C, protective put. Okay, again, as I said, you need to write out the formula once and then rearrange it. Uh, so you can see here for a, a long bond, what do we have? We have the we're long on the underlying asset, we're long on the put, and we're short on the call. So we look up here, long on the asset, long on the put, short on the call, that's a synthetic long bond, okay? So this is the way these questions go. You have to memorize the formula. Let's just go over it again. S naught plus P naught equals C naught plus X over one plus R to the T. And then, uh, so this one is, you know, you're just doing the rearranging. So you say, oh, a long bond, that's going to be long on the asset, long on the put, and short on the call. And you can see I can answer that question very easily in less than 90 seconds. Here's another practice problem. You'll see we're going to use the same technique to answer almost all of these. So according to put call parity, a synthetic put contains A, long position of call, B, long position in the underlying, or C, a short position in the risk-free bond. Okay, when you get this type of question, they're not asking for the full formula. 
uh, full equation, they're just asking for a synthetic put contains, and they're just looking for one variable. So again, start with S naught plus P naught equals C naught plus X, uh, you know, over one plus R to the T, the present value of the exercise price. So this is talking about the synthetic put. So you're going to do P naught equals C naught plus X over one plus R to the T. And then, of course, I'm going to subtract my S naught then. And then I'm going to look up long position in the call. Well, that's true, and A is correct. Long position in the underlying? No, it's a short position in the underlying, so that's wrong. Short position in the risk-free bond? No, it's a plus sign in front of it. It's a long position in the, in the risk-free bond. So again, I think you can see, you know, sometimes candidates start with this put-call parity. It looks pretty intimidating when you have uh, this list of formulas, but if you just start with S naught plus P naught equals C naught plus X over 1 plus R to the T, memorize that one, get any type of question like this, rearrange it, match up the words to the, um, to the formulas, plus is long, neg uh, minus sign is short, and these questions become really easy. Now you're loving the put call parity. So we're going to do two more practice questions and then we're finished with this LOS. Which of the following statements best describes put call parity? The put price always equals the call price. The put price equals the call price if volatility is known. Or C, the put price plus the underlying price equals the call price plus the present value of the exercise price. Okay, I think this question was not so difficult. It's saying which of the following statements best describes uh, put call parity. So, um, you know, if we look at C, the put price plus the underlying price equals the call price plus the present value of the exercise price. That's correct. That's the, that's the English language explaining this algebraic formula here, uh, just in a little bit different ordering. You see they put the put price first. Nevertheless, the uh, put price plus the underlying price equals the call price plus the present value of the exercise price. So again, Write it out, or the long asset plus the long put equals the long call plus the long bond. European put and call prices are related through put call parity, which specifies that the put price plus the price of the underlying equals the call price plus the present value exercise price. So that was straight out of the text. So finish this LOS with one last practice question. I think you're going to like this one. Which of the following transactions is the equivalent of a synthetic long call position? A, long asset, long put, short call. B, long asset, long put, short bond. Or C, short asset, long call, long bond. Okay, if you looked at this uh, question without a little bit of practice, you'd just say, oh my goodness, this list looks so confusing. Synthetic, long call position, long, uh, you know, short, long, this and that. But it's not hard at all because we just have to remember. I always think of it as SPC. You know, I do my little um, memorization skills. So SPC, and then I know, of course, the last term is the, it's got to be the X, the present value of the um, <clears throat> exercise price. So SPC, long the uh, underlying plus long put equals long the call plus the present value of the exercise price. So as, as long as I know that formula, then this one is saying, what is the equivalent of a synthetic call position? So I know I'm just going to keep uh, C naught over on this, uh, just move it over to the left-hand side. I'm going to be long the underlying, I'm going to be long the put, and I'm going to be short the present value of the uh, exercise price, okay? Or we can call that short the bond. So once I've done that, and again, this doesn't take 90 seconds, I'm going to look up and I'm going to see long the asset, correct, long the put, uh, correct, Short the call, what? Short the call? Wait a minute, no, I'm talking about a synthetic, lo no, it's not short the call, A is wrong. Uh, long the asset, long the put, short the bond, yeah, B is right. Let's just double check though. Short the asset, no, I'm long the asset, and wait a minute, long call, no, 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 it doesn't make sense at all. So B is correct, it's really easy. We started with the formula for the put call parity. We adjust it, what is the synthetic, uh, sorry, the uh, equivalent of the synthetic long call position. Now don't forget, long call, that means a positive. How could we change that? We could say, what is the equivalent of a synthetic, a short call position? And then we'd want the negative on this side, you know? 
and we're going to change the sign. So always be careful. Check and double check. A lot of these times these uh, practice questions are asking for the synthetic of the long, the way that we memorized it, but you can also replicate the synthetic short as well just by changing the sign. Okay, we'd move that over to the left hand side and we'd move these over to the right hand side. Okay, so just be careful. You need to read the question uh, very carefully to see that it's a synthetic long and not a synthetic short because that's going to change your ordering. Okay, but if you have that basic um, memorization of S naught plus P naught equals C naught plus X over 1 plus R to the T, then all these questions become fairly easy. Okay, with that, that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.